Title, Silent Odyssey, The Hidden Voyage, Part 1, Life in Domum. To outsiders, life in Domum may have seemed peculiar, but to us it was simply life. Every day the sun would rise from the east, casting a gentle artificial light over the sprawling meadows and shimmering lakes. Every night the stars would glitter across the darkened sky, a stunning canvas of tiny white specks. It was all meticulously predictable, a dance of lights and shadows with unerring precision. But we never questioned it. Why would we? This was our world. Joseph and I lived in a small commune near one of the larger metallic mountains that dotted our landscapes. Our home was nestled amidst tall, rust-colored trees, their trunks as firm as steel, leaves glinting like polished copper. We were geologists by trade, captivated by the curious geology of Domum, particularly the massive metallic mountains that seemed to encapsulate our world. Our days were filled with explorations and studies. We would scale the steep metallic cliffs, collect samples, and map the vast networks of tunnels running within them. Our people, largely agrarian, relied on the mineral-rich soils near these structures for cultivation. Our research played a crucial role in identifying the most fertile areas, ensuring the prosperity of our communities. Life followed a rhythmic cycle of work, community, and recreation. In the evenings, we would gather around bonfires, sharing stories and meals, our voices mingling with the symphony of nocturnal creatures. The children would play games under the starlight, their laughter echoing against the metallic backdrop of our world. Amidst all this, there was a sense of harmony, a sense of belonging. Domum was our haven, our refuge. Even though our world was encapsulated by a ceiling of stars and metal mountains, we felt an inexplicable freedom. We didn't yearn for anything beyond our skies. We didn't even know there was a beyond. To us, Domum was not just a place. It was our home. It was where we laughed, where we cried, where we loved. It was where we dreamt dreams of a future that, unbeknownst to us, was about to change dramatically. Part 2. Unraveling the Mystery The day that began our journey towards the truth was an ordinary one. We were conducting a survey deep within the caverns of one of the larger metallic mountains. Our mission was to chart new tunnels that might lead to untapped veins of mineral-rich soil. It was then that a minor tremor, an anomaly in our seismically stable world, took us by surprise. The tremor revealed an opening to a hidden chamber, something unheard of in the meticulously charted tunnels of our metallic mountains. The discovery was bewildering, a puzzle waiting to be solved. The chamber was unlike any we had seen. It was filled with devices and structures that seemed alien to us. Amid the dust and decay, one item stood out, a device that projected light, creating images and symbols that danced in the air. It was technology that surpassed anything we had in Domum clearly from a civilization far more advanced than ours. But how had it come to be here? For weeks, Joseph and I worked in secrecy, trying to decipher the symbols. Our research was exhaustive as we cross-referenced every record and relic of our past, seeking parallels. We saw our world in a new light, scrutinizing every element of Domum's landscapes and structures, hunting for any sign that might point to the origins of the chamber. Our perseverance eventually paid off. We discovered that the symbols were not just a form of language, but also a code, a key to activating the ancient machinery within the chamber. With cautious optimism, we embarked on the painstaking process of decoding the symbols, hoping to understand the secrets the chamber held. Little did we know, we were on the brink of a revelation that would challenge everything we believed about our world. Part 3. Revelation The day we unlocked the code was etched in stark contrast to the predictable harmony of our existence ancient machinery word to life, filling the chamber with an ethereal hum. A vast holographic display blossomed before us, a spectral light painting celestial blueprints in the air. The image showed Domum, not as a world, but as a mere fragment, an encapsulated biosphere within a star-dotted expanse. The symbols we'd been decoding formed a narrative, a tale woven from the threads of our true past. Domum was a ship, the hope of humanity, on a voyage from a long-forgotten world called Earth. Our destination, Nova Terra, had been destined for habitation. But the projected orbits and data showed a harsh reality. Nova Terra was no longer viable, its orbit decayed and its atmosphere lethal. Joseph, overwhelmed by the magnitude of our discovery, turned to a console embedded in the chamber's wall. His hands shook as he tried to verify the data, tapping into the ship's dormant systems. As he did so, 
A surge of energy jolted from the console, sending him sprawling backward. Joseph! I screamed, rushing to his side. He was convulsing, pain etched across his face. As I cradled him, his grip tightened around mine, his eyes locked onto mine. Keep our people safe, he managed to say, his voice barely a whisper. Those were his last words. He died there, in the cold chamber, in the heart of a metallic mountain. Now I was alone, the sole guardian of a terrifying secret. I considered revealing everything, but what good would it serve? What would it bring our people other than despair? So I chose silence. I sealed the chamber, erasing our tracks. The secret of Domum became a weight I carried, a lonely tribute to the man who had given his life to uncover it. I returned to our people, to the rhythm of our existence. I watched the artificial sun rise and set, watched children play under the gentle glow of the stars, their laughter a soothing balm for my grieving heart. I honored Joseph's last wish, preserving the peace of Domum, safeguarding the harmony of our world. The truth remained buried deep within me, a solemn secret floating in the silent sea of stars. Amidst the grandeur of the cosmos, our world was still Domum, a haven for our people. Not a destination, but a journey, not a failure, but a testament to human resilience.